Say what's cracking, YouTube? It's your boy, 16 to life, and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Yard down. Now, for those of y'all that's new to my page, in 1994, I was arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life, and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories and some good insight. I'm going to share some with y'all today. If you like the story, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification bell that way anytime I drop a story, you'll be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Also, if you want to catch up on some of my stories, some of my previous content, go to my YouTube playlist and you will see that I have my stories organized into different categories and I guarantee you're going to find something that you like. So now let's hop right up into this video. So today... I wanted to do a video talking about um, how much blame should the parents get when they have children who are gangbanging. And the reason I would like to do this video is because a lot of times when I do an interview, especially, I'll get people in the comments, you know, wanting to blame the parents for the actions of their children. Right. And in some cases, yeah, you may have some uh, neglect of parenting. Right. But, excuse me, I also believe in just as many cases, you have good parenting and the kids just choose to do what they choose to do, right? And um, I especially want to speak for um, dudes from my era, right? And so um, I would like to use the term generation, right? But um, because I believe when gang members speak of generations, I believe they're they're speaking of maybe anywhere between five to seven years, but typically a generation is between 15 to 20 years, right? And the reason I say that is because if, okay, so um, the Crips were founded roughly around 1969, right? And so you have people my age, I'll be 53 soon, who say they're from the third or second or third generation, right? But if a generation actually lasts 15 to 20 years, then people my age... Um, are actually for the from the first generation, which of course I don't consider myself a first generation gang banger. And you know, if if uh if today if Tookie was alive and Raymond Washington was alive, they'd roughly be around maybe seventy, I believe seventy one, somewhere around there, right? And so uh, those are the two dudes who are um, credited with with starting the Crips, co-founding the Crips, right? And so um, I am from. The first generation of my neighborhood, my area, which started when 86, 87, right? And so um, so I would like to speak to my era or my generation, especially um, in terms of do I believe that the parents were responsible for the choices me and a lot of my homies made? And I honestly say most definitely not. Now, of course, you know, you did have some people who may have grew up in situations that people would consider they was neglected to a certain extent, right? But I can remember as many individuals, not only in my era and dudes older than me, um, who came from two-parent homes. And if if their father happened to not necessarily be uh, still married to their mother, oftentimes he was in town, he was around, and he was still in their life, you know. And then also back in back in my era, when I was born in 71, growing up, um, it was community first. So, uh, even if the fathers were not around, you still had males of the community of that particular community of people's communities who would instill certain life lessons. And so, you know, it was each one teach one, you know, you know, the saying goes, it takes a, it takes a village to raise a child. And that def that's definitely how it was more back in my times. Like I say, I've ran across a lot of notorious cold dudes who had street reputations in in prison uh they had street reputations from the street and in prison and i ran across many of them in prison and they are what i would consider extremely good dudes and i would have no problem um bringing them around my family uh to this day and you know a couple of them i, I have i have brought around you know and so like i said um because I believe that we was raised different back then, you know. Um, keep in mind, like I said now, Crippen was founded in 69. And so the parents of those individuals, let's just say they happen to be um, 
30, uh, maybe 30, 30 years older than their children, right? So they was probably um, uh, in the 30s, just to me, in their 30s, in their early 30s, in 69. Um, to me, the morals of parents and parenting was extremely different back then. Uh, I know growing up in my community, you know, I went to church with a lot of my homies who ended up being from the same uh, gang that I was from, you know, um, a lot of them was close friends. My mothers knew their mothers. My fathers knew their fathers, so on and so forth. Right. And we respect them as such. So a lot of times when uh, I begin to sell drugs, maybe in 87, 88, you know, we would be in the hood selling drugs. And we may see one of the homies, mothers or fathers come come down the street, you know, going home or wherever. And, and we'd straighten up, you know, take our hats off. You know, if the homies were smoking weed, they'd put all that stuff away. Now, I remember actually one dude who I was selling dope to. Uh, he went and told my father that I was selling drugs, you know. And at the time, uh, I was extremely angry and, and mad at this dude. I'm like, man, why is this dude coming to buy crack from me and going and, going and telling my dad that I'm selling dope? To me, it didn't make no sense. You know, I'm 15, 16 years old. My father came and confronted me about it. And I've always had an extremely uh, good memory. And the dude, I believe it was his, na his name was Peter, right? And I, he told my father that he had bought $5 worth of crack. And so I, I could almost remember every single sale that I had made. And so I almost slipped up and said, uh, he's lying because I didn't I didn't make a five dollar sale yesterday or whatever. Right. But so but today I understand it, even though this dude had an addiction to cocaine or even or even though this dude may have liked to smoke cocaine from time to time. By him growing up in the same community that I grew up in, growing up, knowing my parents, um, having having a relationship with my father, he knew that that wasn't, a, that wasn't an atmosphere for me to be in, even though he was buying drugs and stuff. So I totally um, get it today, right? And so, and those were the type of individuals who raised us, you know, us in our community and stuff. Like I said, a lot of times, especially, and back then, a lot of the communities was close knit, right? So back then, you know, um, a lot of my my friends' fathers, mothers, I would see them at school, I would see them at church. They would coach little league. I had a homie. His uh his father was the bus driver. He was the little league coach. He was a football coach. And so all throughout my life, uh, I got life lessons from him. You know, I remember at at uh maybe about tenth grade. I was up there hanging at his house, visiting his sons on that particular day. I think I had told a teacher to shut up or cut that a teacher or whatever. One of his sons told him that I had done that. Right. He came in there and he asked me and uh, he asked me, hey, man, did you cuss out the teacher or, or tell him to shut up or whatever the situation was? I told him, yes. He told me, OK, well, you know, get on up out of here, man. If you can't respect the teacher, you ain't, you can't have no respect for me. You're not going to be up in here when you cussing the teachers out. And so I say that to say that. That's an example of the lot of the parenting that we had back then, right? So um, I just get a little, I get a little upset from time to time when a person is quick to hop in the comments and automatically blame the parent for the actions of their children, you know, because I know that, like I said, when, when I was in front of my parents, you know, I've done exactly what they expected me to do. You know, they had no idea I was doing the things that I was doing. And so, uh, case in point, while I'm running around selling drugs at the age of 14, 15, my brother, who was a year older than me, he was riding around in with the police as a police explorer. He wanted to be an officer. And so sometimes kids just get out there and they make, they, they make their own choices. And so if a person is quick to judge and blame the parent for the actions of a 14 or 15 year old, I wonder why I never see anything like that in the comments, like when you have these police officers who break the law. And so when they when they're willing to, you know, shoot an individual or beat a, a beat a dude who's handcuffed, why don't people blame the parents then? You know, because, of course, if the parents can be blamed for the actions of a child, they definitely should be blamed for the actions of an adult, because it would seem like those actions of the adult were taught behavior that they still believe in is something that was instilled in them, right? And that's something that I just never see. And so I wonder, I wonder why that is, you know. Um, now there were instances where I did have homies who, you know, their their 
parents were sometimes addicted to drugs. Um, they didn't always have ideal parenting. You know, I do remember one particular um, friend of mine who his parents were on drugs. And so pretty much he was heavily influenced by his two uncles who happened to be, you know, um, caught up in the gang life, selling drugs and stuff like that. You know, from a very, very young age, two or three years old, they was literally blowing weed smoke in his face, you know, uh, having him taking, having him take pictures with blue rags on his shoulder, stuff like that, you know. And so um, at the age of five or six, he's at the neighborhood park running around sometimes seven or eight o'clock at night. But once again, you know, even though many of us was gang members and selling drugs, we tried to look out for him as much as we could, even in our young state of maturity and our young age, because even though we may have been 16, 17, we knew that him being seven or eight, it wasn't an ideal spot for him to hang out at the park. And we would try to send him home as much as possible or run him up, run him uh, away from that park. But of course, unfortunately, we couldn't always be in his life 24 seven. And um, he came to idolize the gang members that he saw. He came to idolize, you know, um, the gang members he believed his uncles were and many of his uncle's friends who were gang members. Unfortunately for him, around the age of 18 or 19, he ended up uh, being charged with a murder and he has a life sentence to this day. Actually, I interviewed him in the name of that interview for anybody who's interested in seeing the interview. And I believe it's one of my better interviews. The name of that interview is uh, why I stabbed the captain. It's a part one and a part two. So, um, in certain situations, you know, um, sometimes the parents were to blame, but I don't necessarily believe that the parents were wholeheartedly, um, to blame for some of the actions of, of dudes in our generation. Like I said, um, I told a story one time about a dude who was older than me, extremely well-known crip, um, Dan Tanna from Long Beach Insane, uh, he came up, he came up from a two parent home, you know, well, well recognized crip, um, in the penitentiary system. I did a story titled the biggest crip I ever saw. Uh, that's who I was talking about. And I really, I relayed a story where we happened to be in the county jail, um, in his cell, just talking. There was a dude right outside of his cell who, who had, well, the dude had came and asked, Dan Tanner, could he use the phone because it was Dan Tanner's phone time? Dan Tanner told him, go ahead, man. He said he needed to call his mom. So we in the cell talking, me and Dan Tanner. Uh, we hear the dude who asked to use the phone to call his mom. He's outside cussing and talking crazy. And so Dan Tanner said, hey, hold on, uh, homie. He stepped up to him. He said, I thought you said uh, you was going to call your mom. He said, I am. Dan Tanner said, you talking to your mom right now? He said, yeah, I'm on the phone with her right now. Dan Tanner hung the phone up on his face. Hung the phone up in his face, told him to get up off the phone and get up out of there. So I say all that to say that, uh, you know, he was raised with respect. He was wait. He was raised not only to respect his parents, but he was also raised that people, other people should respect their parents as well. And so um, I don't believe that, especially back in my generation, that, you know, parents um, necessarily raise their kids to go out there and commit crime. You know, there's always exceptions and stuff to the rule. But I believe actually today, you know, today parents are, it, it's more, it's more prevalent among parents today, period, to not necessarily teach, teach their, their children to respect adults um, as a whole. You know, back in my days, regardless of all the gang bangings, the dudes selling drugs, it was rare to see People act out in school and act out um, in a disrespectful fashion the way that you see the kids do nowadays. So, um, you know, that just always, you know, like I say, rubs me a little the wrong way when a person will jump into the comments and not necessarily having the whole the whole entire story. But he's so quick and he's so willing to bring the parents. And once again, I reiterate, if you can blame the parents for the actions of a 14 year old or a 15 year old. Uh, why are we not blaming the parents for some of these dudes who who run and go shoot the school up? Some of these dudes who run into a mall, you know, these grown, mature, uh, overage individuals, men who go shoot them all up, you know. So why isn't um, that being blamed on the parents? And so, you know, that's <clears throat> that's uh, that's just something that I always trip on. You know, I remember, you know, like I said, and, and, and the reason I brought up the reason why I brought up that. 
um, you know, Crippen was founded around 69 is because if Crippen was founded, founded in 69, the ideology of Crippen and being gangs and stuff, you know, being Crips and Bloods was founded in, 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 uh, 69, their parents probably had to be, like I said, in, in their thirties and they had no idea of, Basically, what Crippen and Blooden was, it was it was pretty much new to them. And so, like I said, uh, by the time my hood formed, 86, 87, you know, my parents had no idea of basically what that was. You know, I remember um, drugs came out, you know, uh, um, crack cocaine and uh, people were selling dope and they would call it the rock house because the drugs look like a rock. And so out there in Bannon, where I'm from, you have houses on certain streets. That is literally made of rocks. And so uh, I remember one time my father, who had read in, who had read in the newspaper that a um, rock house had been raided on a certain street. He wanted to ride around there and see uh, the results of the raid, right? So he drove his motorcycle around there. Um, hold on one sec. I don't know if my phone is recording this or not. He drove his motorcycle around there to the street that he had saw in the newspaper, was a, which was a couple streets up and over from uh, where we lived at or where he stayed at at the time. He came back and he said, you know, uh, it ain't no rock houses on that street because he was looking for a literal rock house. Not knowing that when the newspaper was talking about rock houses, it was talking about crack cocaine. So I say all that to say once again that um, in my generation, you know, uh, our parents was extremely naive to a lot of the things that we was out there doing. And so, um, yes, later on, once my father became aware of, you know, once again, that I was out there selling drugs, he would often ride his motorcycle through the area that we would sell drugs in an attempt to try to catch me. And if he had called me out there, he would have jumped out and physically tried to, uh, to harm me, right? But you can't come looking at me. You can't come looking for me on no loud ass motorcycle. You know, so of course, every time I hear him coming or anytime I hear a motorcycle about a month, I mean, about a block or two away, I'm fist to run and go hide in the bushes. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, that just goes to show that, you know, a lot of times or at least back in our generation, you know, our parents, of course, they grew up on respect and they instilled that and passed that down to us, you know, so. I don't necessarily always believe that the parents are, are even in this day and age, I don't necessarily believe that the parents are always to blame for the actions of their children. Are there things that they possibly could do better? Yes, but I believe that that is applicable to all parents. You know, there's always things once parents look back in hindsight, there's always things that they possibly could have done better or would have done better had they been fully aware of the circumstances. Right. So. Anyway, I just wanted to drop this video for y'all. Uh, I know I haven't been uploading in a couple of days. I had a problem with my microphone, uh, but I figured all that out. Hopefully, I got some good videos coming for y'all tomorrow and stuff. So, you already know who it is, man. It's your boy, 16 to life. Resume normal program.